Tropical disturbance, a threat in the Gulf of Mexico. A significant tropical threat is brewing, uh, already starting to get some decent rotation around it. Invest 93L is what it's known as at the moment, an area of interest sitting off the coast of Cancun, Mexico. In the Yucatan Channel it will stall for a little bit and then start to move northwards into the Gulf of Mexico and on towards the coast of the United States. As of 12 p.m. Central Time in the US, Eastern Time in Mexico, as of August 26, it had winds of 30 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,005 millibars, currently moving north at 12 miles per hour. National Hurricane Center has a 90% chance on this in the next seven days and 70% in the next 48 hours. Here's its location right now. No tropical storm force winds as of yet, of course, with those winds still quite down. 21.5 north, 86.3 degrees west puts it very close to the coast of Mexico. It is just 66 kilometers from Cancun, 108 from Holbox on the north coast, 443 from Havana, Cuba, 575 from Key West, and 816 from Tampa. Now this system expected to become a tropical storm probably in two days or so, um, which might be a bit surprising. Uh, so keep watching out for it because the way it's looking on satellite imagery, it's getting quite decent looking. So it could happen prior to Monday. Uh, so certainly something to watch out for. And when it does form, uh, then we'll be really looking towards the coast of the Gulf of Mexico states. Now here we are, the primary hazard right now, storm surge, uh, because the wind threat isn't really well established yet and nor is the rainfall threat. So really we're looking at substantial storm surge, uh, which even if it's a fairly weak system, could be a significant threat to the western coast of Florida and up throughout the panhandle. Uncertainty in the forecast remains um, for impacts anywhere from Alabama to Alabama to the Florida Keys. Now this is the projected track with tropical storm force winds starting to appear by the time we get to Sunday and then on Monday probably turning into a tropical storm. It will be struggling on the western side, much more pronounced on the eastern side and at the moment we're looking towards a landfall maybe on Wednesday um, in that bend region of Florida not far from uh, Panama City. Now that's uh, towards the end of the week there, moving through the southeast of the United States and maybe back out to sea. But it's a very uncertain forecast at the minute that has to be stressed quite a lot right now uh, because it is just forming, uh, but we feel the need to produce an update this early on for our early warning. So 30 miles per hour right now, AMSU a little bit higher at 35 miles per hour. And you can see across the whole Atlantic there, Franklin out to the east is now a hurricane as well for those who uh, out of the loop there. So this is the forecast uh, projections from a few different models here from RAM and you can see the HWRF really going out on a limb by the way taking it into western Cuba and then into Florida uh, but the other two models dis depicted there, the GFS and H1 are pretty close knit there for a landfall um, not far from Apalachicola I think it was uh, with wind shear hovering around 20, 20 knots for large parts of the storm's track. So here it is once again, this is on the GFS, you'll note there the western side looking very bare, the eastern side quite large in terms of its tropical storm force winds and making landfall not too far from hurricane status there, um, winds getting up to around 70 miles per hour by the looks of things just before it makes landfall but once again this is very speculative uh, the certainly for the intensity could be quite variable uh, it's st still very early stages but that's just a projection there from the GFS model now taking a look at the projected uh, radar velocities or reflectivity simulated here it's just a mock-up not really depicting what we're exactly going to see but it gives you an idea what the structure of the storm might look like and then um, looks like it will be weighted towards the northern side as it moves inland over the Carolinas and then some of its influence might move back out to sea. Now this is just the GFS parent model of course there are some ensembles that take it further west and take it slower over the Gulf of Mexico so it's something to consider the slower it goes over the Gulf of Mexico the higher the chances are for this storm getting stronger and conversely the faster it moves the less time it will have to intensify. 
Now looking at the rainfall projections, and you can probably hear rain in the background here, by the way, uh, we've just got a major rainstorm that's just started up here, but rainfall projections there um, across the United States and Western Cuba, they're getting up to around significant values, maybe approaching 10 inches in a few spots, but eight inches there, and, and actually, yes, a little area of 10 inches there to the west of the storm, which is curious. I'm not sure whether that will happen, but I would expect storm totals possibly getting up towards eight inches in a few spots, especially in the interior southeast of the United States. And over in Cancun right now, over the next few days, three inches the maximum there. So not a huge amount, but still significant from this storm. Sea surface temperatures over the next, uh, over the track of the storm, very warm as we know 29 to 30 degrees celsius these temperatures read a little bit low as well uh, so temperatures getting towards the coast of the united states florida there getting up towards 31 degrees maybe even pushing 32 no way are sea surface temperatures ever going to be an issue for this storm certainly not uh, the coolest coolest sea surface temperatures probably are where it is right now around 27 28 degrees celsius so finally looking at some satellite imagery, this is how the storm is presenting itself today. Well, I say storm, it isn't actually a tropical storm yet, but certainly there are some thunderstorms blowing up in that system. We're getting a little bit of loose rotation, it's not tightening up very much yet, but it's certainly making a good account of itself on its satellite imagery there with the convection really blowing up on the eastern side, getting into the minus 70s probably I would expect there. Um, and that northern side there as well looking decent too, wrapping around quite decently. Southwestward still looking a little bit bare there and I imagine there still may be some scope for some dry air intrusion before it starts to get going. Wind shear will be the main inhibiting factor for this system as it starts to get going in the next few days. We zoom out there, you take a look at Franklin as well off to the east, so we could have two active tropical storms and possibly two hurricane threats later on next week.